Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. So it's a pleasure to be here to talk about what I'm discussing with Luca since more than 10 years. And I will try to share with you some of uh, this discussion and some of uh, the story that we uh, had together. So let me start with two sentences from Nobel laureate, uh, which uh, the first one, Sidney Brenner, states that uh, biology needs uh, causality and abstract data must be mapped into knowledge. Paul Nart speaks specifically about languages to model the information flow in biological systems. So the idea was to have language-based technologies to enable modeling in biology and to try to enhance the way in which uh, systems are, uh, are represented. And we start from the basic metaphor that we uh, discussed a lot also with Udi at the very beginning uh, on the stochastic pi calculus, in which each biological entity is represented as a process uh, or a program. Uh, then biological entities can interact each other so they have interaction capabilities and we can represent these capabilities as interfaces on the processes or on the program. And then they really interact. And this interaction is uh, message passing between processes or updating of shared variables. We have seen also before models that can, uh, can, 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 can have different basic uh, formalisms. And then the dynamics of the biological systems can be, uh, can be described by the running of these big program and interpreting the state changes of the program, we can interpret how the biological process evolved. Uh, so there, there have been a lot of force starting since 1996 with work by uh, Fontana. First of all, I apologize because for sure I will forget to mention something. So uh, the, the, this is what I, 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 I tried to, to recall. So 1996, Fontana tried to uh, to, to model biological, the dynamic biological systems by adapting lambda calculus. But what was missing there was the inherent concurrency that you observe in biological systems. A lot of threads active simultaneously, millions of actors that interact together in order to, uh, to, 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 to show the behavior uh, at phenotypical level. Uh, then we uh, tried with stochastic pi calculus, uh, we do the, and uh, after that, uh, Vincent, and, and, and Cosimo developed Kappa Calculus. And also Luca entered into the game with the brain calculi and the bioambient. And we started discussing at that time about languages for uh, modeling biological systems. And this discussion indeed led also at the, uh, at the starting of, uh, of Cosby. And after that, there have been a lot of others uh, languages that are more or less variants and in, in terms of the computational model, in terms of the syntax, in terms of the specific features that they can represent. So there are uh, tens of, uh, of, these, uh, of these calculi uh, around. Uh, but uh, in the experience we had in, in, in these more than 10 years trying to model biological systems, uh, we have a sort of negative message for these kind of approaches, which is good because when you have a negative message, you start new research, and you try to solve those, those issues. And the negative messages are that usually biological knowledge about the dynamics of the systems is not available. So you have holes in the knowledge you have, and you have to cope with that. Biological systems in real cases are, are, are very large, and the performance of these formal, uh, formal methods in terms of approaching these large systems is not good enough. <laughs> And finally, uh, as we have seen in the first talk of this session, listing uh, codes to biologists to let them interpret whether it works or not is something that is not, this is, that is not feasible. So there is an issue also of, uh, uh, of usability. So what I'm trying to do now is to tell what, uh, what we are doing at Cosby to try to approach these three issues. And uh, I will start just presenting yet another one language for modeling a biological system that has not yet a name, so I call it L. Uh, and uh, it tries to mainly address the issue of, uh, 
uh, of performance, not yet usability, it's still a language. So you have a syntax, you have to write code, you have to run it, you have to observe what it comes out from the state change of the system. Uh, but it is uh, quite close to, uh, at least uh, intuitively, quite close to what uh, a, a biologist has in mind when he thinks of a system. It is uh, based on, uh, formally, a system is a multiset of multiset of objects. Uh, each multiset of objects is what is called a complex, which is also something close to the idea of kappa calculus, but in order to, Im to improve performance, what we do here is consider a complex just a set, so we do not take into account which is the structure connecting the molecules inside the set. And uh, uh, we have rewriting rules of these objects that map one state of the system into another that are in correspondence one to one with the main chemical reactions that the biological systems undergo. So here you can see an association uh, of uh, two objects, one that contains an A and whatever else, and so here you have pattern matching indeed, and another one that contains B and whatever else, and you get a new complex joining these two guys here. And you have dissociation, association, substitution, and a general rule that allow you to manipulate systems for strange things that are not classical uh, uh, association and dissociation of objects. The novelty of this approach is that you can associate imperative code with each reaction that implements site conditions and that can update uh, variables. Because indeed here, instead of simple processes sharing channels, each object has internal variables that can be updated dynamically. And you can create new object and things like that, all the things that we have seen so far. The, 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 the idea here is to have this imperative code that you can associate with this reaction. And these are all and only the rules that the language has. Uh, the language is uh, compiled into, into C sharp, so in the end, your model is a C-sharp program generated starting from this, uh, from this, this reaction. So uh, the, the, the next point is uh, we want to run a stochastic simulation. So those elements, those reaction rules are selected stochastically. And the basic idea that is uh, underneath most of these approaches is the Gillespie algorithm in which a system is represented as a set of reaction of these forms in which S1, Sn are the species in the system and uh, you have M reactions that can manipulate the system by changing the abundances of the molecules of each species after the reaction and each reaction has a rate, a constant rate that determines the, the, the time and the speed assuming to have exponential distribution mass action law that drive these systems. And the idea is that you can define propensities for each reaction so that the propensity over an interval of time provides the probability that a given reaction is selected to fire. And this is the algorithm. The algorithm is uh, as a bottleneck in the computation of, in the update of the propensity of all the species that in the original formulation has to be done at each step. There, has, there are uh, um, Better, better solution, but if we want to remain exact as this algorithm is with respect to the, to the, uh, uh, to the mass action law, uh, we have to cope with this bottleneck. So what we did is to define a new faster algorithm with respect to the one available that is still exact, uh, but it works using a notion coming from abstract interpretation on intervals of values rather than on single values. So what we have here is an approximation indeed for the amount of uh, species Xi in the system and also an approximation for the propensity of all the reactions. The selection is done by checking on the fly whether the approximation I did maintains me in the exact space of solution or me or move me out. If it moves me out, I reject the selection 
and I repeat the procedure. So indeed, it's an approximation that avoids the computation of propensity at each step. But when I go out the safe part, the white one here in this picture for the selection, when I go out, I recompute the propensity. So indeed, this algorithm computes propensity of reaction only when this is really needed to be done. And we can, and we can prove that uh, it is still a correct, uh, it is equivalent to the direct method of Gillespie. Uh, it is going to appear the, the algorithm on the Journal of Chemical Physics, where the original paper by Gillespie was presented. And these are some benchmarks of the performance of the language that implements that algorithm, in which uh, we see that this is the language with the standard Gillespie algorithm, and this is the language with this algorithm that I showed you, in which you can see that it improves most of the time. And also on this benchmark, uh, compared with DIDSI, Bionet gen, uh, two variants of Gillespie algorithm in DIDSI, it most of the times performs, performs better. Uh, and even better when we use more complex, more complex uh, Kinetics, the Michael is maintained in this case because it is more complex function. Uh, and then we compared the algorithm implemented in L with the algorithm implemented in a standalone fashion to which it is passed not the L code but just the chemical reaction to see which is the overhead imposed by the L syntax. And you can see that there is some overhead, but it is not, uh, it is not dramatic. It's still a language, I was saying, so it is, it is not yet usable. Uh, what we can do for improving on that side, uh, you have a lot of graphical formalisms to represent biological systems. All of them are different, but all of them share uh, the number, the very high number of graphical symbols that are needed to represent, mm -hmm. to represent the system. And since you want to map these kind of things into a program, this language has to be not ambiguous, and you have to know the semantics of all of these different objects uh, for writing down your system. So what we try to do is to, to avoid the, the syndrome of a new symbol. After the talk by Andrew Philip yesterday evening, this was already prepared, in which he said that Luca says that a new thing is new, is really new when there is a new symbol. This is <laughs> completely the opposite. <laughs> but this is what we did, we do, we did. And, and so what we made is reducing to three arrows and five nodes to model all the systems and having an automatic mapping of these guys. This is how they look like so into, into uh, something that can be simulable uh, observing. Uh, yeah, this is the, 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 the manual of the first uh, game by Atari, insert the coin, avoid Klingo, and it was clear. <laughs> <laughs> So programming language and biology, uh, I think that now needs more biology. And this is because what we do there miss all the data aspects that is what is produced in the labs. So I think that and this was very inspiring, the talk by Andy this morning, to try to integrate in a language framework both death analysis and the simulation part that I showed. it. So thank you all. Uh, and uh, of course, thank you, Luca, for all the inspiring discussions on this field for the next 20 years as well.